There can be numerous reasons for someone in New Jersey to have their wages garnished. But do you have any options to stop it? Depending on your situation, sometimes having your wages garnished could put you in a financial hardship. For example, if someone makes in New Jersey's minimum wage of $13 an hour, and now their wages are being garnished for a $40,000 unpaid debt, well, that may be put them into a hardship where they need to consider filing bankruptcy. Now, all of that to say, I wanna go through a few different things in today's video. Welcome to Send Finance's YouTube channel where we cover wage garnishment in New Jersey and help folks understand their options to resolve. With that said, everyone's situation is unique. And so we built a free New Jersey wage garnishment calculator to help folks see what their options are to stop it, compare the pros and cons to each option, and estimate the cost based on their personalized data. My name is Justin and I'm one of the analysts here at Ascend. I speak with quite a few folks who are unfortunately facing a garnishment. So I'd love to help you understand the process and options. In today's video, we're gonna go through a few things. First, I wanna help you understand the options to stop a garnishment. Second, I wanna go through the New Jersey wage garnishment laws. Third, I'm gonna help you understand what the wage garnishment process in New Jersey looks like. But second to last, I wanna help you understand the steps to finding out who it may be garnishing wages. And then lastly, I wanna help you understand which options should you potentially do, which one makes most sense. Now, before I go too further into to ways to stop a garnishment in New Jersey, I wanted to say that if this video ends up being helpful, feel free to leave a like as it's always encouraging for us to see. Also, if you'd like to see more videos like this covering wage garnishment and options to resolve debt in New Jersey, feel free to subscribe as we're trying to put out new videos weekly. Now, let's get started. So as I've noted before, we understand that you may be feeling overwhelmed. And one of the most important things at this point is understanding how to stop a garnishment, as it could be debilitating. So we built a New Jersey wage garnishment calculator to help you understand either A, how much you may be garnished, or B, if you're currently being garnished, determining whether that is the correct amount. And so we wanna make sure that you're set up for success, or at least everything is accurate. And with that said, we wanna also have on the calculator, we provide options to stop a garnishment. And so when it comes to stopping a garnishment, there are unfortunately a limited number of ways. As at this point, the court has already issued an order for an unpaid debt. However, there are options to consider. So let's get right into those now. So one option could be to potentially stop a garnishment through filing a bankruptcy. There is the liquidation bankruptcy known as Chapter 7, which could potentially provide immediate relief from a garnishment and other unsecured debt. Now, in order to file a Chapter 7 in New Jersey, you need to pass the Chapter 7's means test. There are income requirements based on your household size. And so what I'm going to put on the screen now is what the current income limits are for a Chapter 7 seven bankruptcy in New Jersey. And so as you can look here, you'll see that based on the number of people you have in your house, the income threshold goes up. And so if you're looking at it right now and you're seeing that you may be above it or you're just above it, you can actually take our free chapter seven calculator. Or if you are just trying to get more up-to-date figures, you can take our calculator. It'll help estimate whether you'd qualify based on your zip code, based on your personalized data, and also give you the cost based on your area and see what you may be able to find out. Now, we want it to be frictionless in a sense. And so you don't even have to add an email in to see your results. And so uh, if you have questions though, after taking the calculator, you can request for us to reach out and I can go through with you in detail. Now, with that all to say that the chapter seven filing fee in New Jersey is $338, but you may actually be entitled to have it waived if you're under the fee poverty guidelines that I'm going to put in the screen here. Now, like the house of household, you can see that based on the number of people, the income threshold goes up. And so if you're able to be under that, you may actually be able to waive that filing fee to the courts. Now, let's say it doesn't make sense to file bankruptcy, whether that means the garnishment is only for $1,000 or if you just want to look at a different option first. If that's the case, you could look at trying to file an exemption through the court. You would probably want to reach out to your local courthouse to see if you may be eligible for any exemptions. For example, you may be able to file a head of household exemption, which could potentially limit how much they're able to withhold from your paycheck. Now, I want to help educate you on some of the New Jersey wage garnishment laws. So in New Jersey, there should be a limit on the amount of earnings that can be withheld from a single paycheck. Depending on the state, it's generally just based on disposable 
earnings. And so the wage garnishment amount in New Jersey, I'm actually going to put in the description below so that you can kind of see what the laws are and what that would all look like, because it can be a little complex. So I rather have it kind of on paper for you. And so I'm going to put it in the description to help you see what that is, as well as an article that goes more in depth on that as well. So now that we've covered the garnishment laws and at least pointing in the direction where to find it, I want to help you understand the steps and the process behind a wage garnishment. Now, when it comes to a wage garnishment, the actual process of it de really depends on the, the type of debt actually being collected, as there's actually potentially specific procedures for garnishing someone ages for, you know, child support or spousal support versus compared to maybe like credit card debt. So with that all said, though, the, the process is generally similar across the board for collecting unpaid, unsecured debt. So let's kind of get into what the process looks like for reaching at, you know, a wage garnishment for something like that. Now, the first thing they're going to have to do is most likely obtain a judgment against you. And so wage garnishments don't happen overnight, right? And so fortunately, there are checks and balances put in place to protect both the debtor and the creditor from doing anything with ill intent. So if you are facing a garnishment from, let's say, the federal government, maybe for like an unpaid student debt. The process may look a bit different as they may not need to actually have a court order to withhold your earnings, but nevertheless, let's focus on, you know, regular traditional unsecured debt. So the first step to obtaining a judgment is through a debt collection lawsuit. So the creditor will need to properly serve you for any unpaid unsecured debt. So that's going to probably include credit cards, medical bills, and personal loans, payday loans, of course, and things of that nature. So once you've received the summons, you should see a few things. First, the facts of the case, right? And so you should see a summary of the law, the description of the debt, and the exact amount you, that you owe. And so most times you should actually have about 30 days to respond, but it should stay what that is on the summons. Now, let's say, you know, the creditor has enough documentation to provide sufficient proof, right? And so they have enough proof that you owe the debt. The court name now may issue a default judgment. So with the judgment, though, the, the creditor now has the choice to whether they want to pursue further legal action by maybe requesting a wage garnishment order. So that is the next step here in the process is actually obtaining a wage garnishment order. So now that we've actually touched on what it looks like to obtain a judgment, I wanna kind of go through what the next step of it looks like and kind of what it looks like to obtain a wage garnishment order. So as I just alluded to, with the judgment, the creditor is now able to potentially request a wage garnishment order. So here's what that looks like. The first thing is the creditor is going to request a writ of execution from the court. The next thing is there, there's going to be a garnishment packet served to your employer. Now, once the employer has received the garnishment packet, you may actually start to see your wages being garnished probably, you know, in the first paycheck you've received 10 days after the service. So once your employer has received the garnishment packet, you may actually start to see your wages being garnished in the first paycheck you receive. That's about 10 days after the date of being served. And so your employer may need to provide you with a copy of the garnishment order. And so you should be able to challenge this order, but you may only have around 10 days to ask for any potential exemptions. Now, Sometimes folks are not even aware that they are being garnished, who's garnishing, or what the balance is for, and for many, many reasons, unfortunately. So before I go too much further, I wanna help you figure out where to go if you either don't know who's garnished your wages or you're not sure the balance they're garnishing you for. I've actually spoken with more and more folks who have unfortunately been caught off guard by a recent garnishment from their wages. Most times they're first hearing about it from being notified by their employer or they, they just noticed a portion of their paycheck was being taken out. And so if you do fall into this category, I want to help you understand a few simple steps that, that may help you actually answer those questions and, and get a little bit more understanding. Of course, if you already know who's garnishing your wages and the total balance, feel free to skip to the next part here, more covering your options to resolve it as well that I touched on earlier. But if you don't know who's garnishing your wages or what the balance is, you know, here are some steps to take if, if you need more information. So one, one step could be, you know, it's depending on everyone's situation, but one step could be reaching out to payroll and seeing if they have any information on who submitted the garnishment order. Most likely them or, or someone within your employer has information or the documents that they were served. Now, once you know who is garnishing your wages, uh, you should be able to call them directly to get the information on the balance. So once you have an idea of the law firm that's handling the account, you could potentially reach out to them and get an idea of the balance, when it started, how much they want, if there's any offers to resolve. Or if, if that doesn't work for any reason, you could potentially reach out to the courthouse and see if they're able to look up your case. If you call the local courthouse, they may have the case information regarding the judgment and the garnishment issued. Of course, there's no promises on any of these, but those could be options to explore. Now, if both of those options don't work, 
you may be able to check your credit report and see if there's any outstanding debts that it may be in relation to. So if you have a medical bill from eight, four years ago that is in collections and you haven't paid on it and your wages are being garnished and you look in the credit report and you see there's a medical bill in collections, well, it could be that, but you know, those are things to, to check out. Now, the multiple question here is which options should you do? Now, with all that to say, you know, ultimately it's up to you. However, I would encourage you to take our wage garnishment calculator as that will help you compare your options, the cost, the pros and cons to handling a potential garnishment. As I do understand that it can be overwhelming, you're, you're always welcome to give us a call or text at 833-272-3631 and we'd be happy to chat through your situation. I do hope that this video was helpful, but if you do have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment down below as I am sure there are others with a similar question. We will do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. However, thanks so much for watching and I'm always here if you have any questions.